Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. As many of you know, I'm a big retro video game fan in addition to covering all the other tech I do here on the channel. And every couple of years, a company called Analog releases some amazing hardware. This is their newest device. It's called the Analog 3D. I just got mine last week. And this replicates very accurately the Nintendo 64, but it allows you to play those games on your modern television with minimal lag, and in some ways it's better than the original experience. And I have been a sucker for these things uh, over the years, so I've owned just about all of their consoles. And there's kind of a flow to the product cycle here in that these things come out, all of us on YouTube start talking about them, and we get these awesome reviews, and everybody gets excited about it. But then when you go to buy the thing, you can't get it. Here it is, sold out. No word on when the new ones are going to come in. Their handheld device, sold out. Uh, their TurboGrafx-16 device is available, but that one is not as popular as some of the others they've come up with here. So, for example, their uh, Sega Genesis here, the SG is sold out. The Super Nintendo version, sold out. Everything is sold out. You can't get them. So what's the deal? Are these like the retro video game equivalents of Laboo-Boo's? where you got a very artificially limited supply available and you just see the scalpers picking up everything and driving the cost up? Or is there a business case for the fact that they can't make enough of these to meet demand? And is the demand even enough to support this company over the long term, especially at the level of quality that they try to deliver? So we're going to explore this topic a little bit. And we're also going to look at whether or not Mod Retro, the newest player in this high-end retro gaming space, might nudge this industry into a better direction, especially given its founder, Palmer Lucky, who's the founder of Oculus, is well-resourced and might be able to absorb some of the hits it takes to produce one of these FPGA-based game consoles. Let's get to it. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for everything on the table here with my own funds, and I didn't have to pay a scalper for them either. I got them direct from their manufacturers. And what struck me about buying a Laboo was how similar it is to buying an analog console. So in the case of the Laboo there is a widely known drop time, and you have to load up their app at the right moment and get yourself in a virtual line to be able to pick one of these things up at their retail price, which is usually like $20 or $25. If you don't and you're at the mercy of scalpers, these things can sell for two or three times that much, if not more. And then, of course, you've got the fakes out there and everything else. In the case of analog, what they'll do is announce a drop time and everybody piles in quickly to try to pick up one of these things before they sell out again. And a tweet here from Jonathan Peros kind of sums things up quite well, which is that there's a cycle of people begging for more inventory. They release a little bit of it. Everybody piles in and buys it. But ultimately, scalpers end up getting the lion's share and driving up costs on eBay. How bad is it on eBay? Well, check this out. I looked at price charting the other day to see what these things were selling for. Uh, this one here on the right is the NT Mini. This is selling for about $1,000 right now. It's sold for about 400 new. Their SG, which is the Sega Genesis model, is selling for about $500. And the Super Nintendo Analog NT there is selling also for $500. And scalpers are getting about double their cost on the Analog 3D, which just launched this week. And all of these, of course, cost substantially less when they were available. And what's crazy is that the build quality on these is exceptional. They all feel like they could have been made by Nintendo or Sega. Uh, the NT Mini here, which was their first FPGA console, is like a solid block of aluminum. It is the highest quality thing you'd ever look at. And the new one here feels really nice too, along with their handheld, the Pocket. And it's crazy that they've got these nice products, but they just can't make enough or don't want to make enough to meet the demand. Now, unlike the artificially constrained market for my daughter's Laboo here, yes, it's my daughter's and not mine, there is an actual constraint on these analog consoles, namely the FPGA chips that power them. FPGAs are used in a lot of things, most of them not video game consoles. Uh, so for example, you can find this article from the Atlantic Council talking about how FPGA chip supply is a national security issue because these massively parallel devices are used in things like aircraft and missile systems and all sorts of things that go beyond playing video games. 
The reason why they work so well for retro video game hardware is that most of these retro game systems had a lot of different processors that were working in tandem, and the FPGAs, given how massively parallel they are, can very accurately recreate all of the internal logic that was going on inside of these consoles, and that's why these things are so good. Not just the analog ones, but all of the other FPGA-based consoles we'll talk about in a minute. So it's not only supply, it is cost, and if they buy up too many of these things at the high component cost price, they may not be able to even break even, let alone make a profit. So I think some of the constraints in the industry are driving it, and of course the fact that these things are not cheap to make, especially when you've got something carved out of aluminum like this one, but also the very high quality plastics that they've put into place on these. Could they come up with a better way to sell these things? Absolutely but I think we're looking at more of a constraint of supplies. Now, Analog is not the only company struggling with supply. Retro Remake, which is run by Taki Udon, has this awesome device called the Mr. Pi. This is an inexpensive version of the open source Mr. Project, which is an FPGA-based retro computing and gaming solution. I love the Mr. I've done a lot of content on it. I definitely suggest you check it out. This thing will run the Nintendo 64, the Saturn, the PlayStation, all the way back through the 80s and 90s and 70s of your favorite consoles, arcade games, and computers. There's new cores being added all the time. It's just an amazing project. And what's really cool is you can hook these up to your CRT television. You can do that with the NT Mini here, along with adapters for their other uh, consoles, which of course are also sold out at the moment. So the Mister for me is like my go-to retro gaming device these days. But you can't get one of these at the moment because they are sold out. And even some other Mister suppliers like Mister Add-ons here is also sold out, not only of the Mister devices themselves, but also some of the other items you need to get one working, like your analog and digital boards and RAM and other things. So it's really hard to get any kind of FPGA-based device going at the moment just because everything has constrained supplies. There is a very limited customer base for this. So those of you watching these videos are into this, but I would guarantee you if you went out on the street right now and interviewed a bunch of people randomly, not many people would know what an FPGA-based retro game console is. And I'm also sure a lot of normal people are satisfied with the games they can get for free through their Switch online service or from an emulator that they can run on their computer or one of the other millions of ways that people can play games on much cheaper devices. And sometimes people just hook their old consoles up to their TV, as bad as that experience is. So enter Mod Retro. They are selling FPGA-based game consoles that you can actually get at the moment. Uh, so right now, their only product available is the Chromatic, which is a Game Boy clone that is running with an FPGA. I reviewed it just about a week or two ago. I was really impressed with this device. It is exceptionally well made. It's made out of magnesium. They have a version with a sapphire screen also, which is resistant to scratching. It is really over-engineered for what it is, but it's beautiful. And they have them in stock, which is so unusual for an FPGA-based product. And just yesterday, I believe, they announced the M64, which is their Nintendo 64 clone console. They are going right up against the analog device here. And one of the things that people were talking about is the fact that they might actually make enough of these to satisfy demand. They even have a nicer controller here that very much replicates the feel and look of the original. And these will be coming out soon. They'll have some more announcements on it as time goes on here. And it makes you wonder, how can they do it and nobody else can at the moment? Well, the difference is the company's founder, Palmer Lucky. Uh, Palmer Lucky, of course, founded Oculus. He sold it to Meta and made a bunch of money there. And I think he's looking at this more as a passion project than a way to make money. In fact, he said as much. At every step, we built custom components that make this the ultimate way to play your Game Boy games, even though that was definitely a bad business decision for Mod Retro. And why? Because I love the Game Boy and I don't see this as a way to make money. I see this as a way to make the world's best tribute to the Game Boy, something that I'll be proud of for a very long time. So I think Palmer Lucky definitely has the resources to make enough of these consoles to meet demand and probably go beyond the initial demand. 
because he can afford to make these things. He can afford to hold on to some inventory. He can afford to market these things better. And if he's not really eager to make a profit or even break even, I think it will probably result in success insofar as getting these systems out there into the hands of anyone who wants them. He also has another advantage in that he's got access to FPGA suppliers that his competitors may not because his other company, Anderol, is making defense equipment, uh, drones and other automated attack systems, and these all use FPGAs to some extent. So I'm sure he's got suppliers that he can work with through his defense company to get access to some of these chips that, again, his competitors may not be able to buy at that same volume. But if you wanted to place an order for an FPGA-based gaming system, there are a couple of options. You will have to wait a little bit, but you don't have to get into a Labubu-style drop to get your order in. One option is the Mr. Multisystem 2. I did just order one of these, so when it comes in, I'll review it. And this is a fully assembled Mr. Solution, complete with a 3D printed case. And they have two versions available. One is a digital version that works on an HDMI television. Their analog version will work on an HDMI TV, but will also allow you to connect it up to a CRT television. And in my opinion, that is the best way to play these Mr. games because they look so good on a classic CRT. And definitely check out my playlist so you can see it in action. Um, so this is in production and they're shipping these things out as soon as they're made. So when you order it, you get in line and then yours will ship when it's your turn. But you don't have to sit there and wait for something to log into. You can just order it right now and when it shows up, it shows up. Now, Taki Udon, who has not made more of these awesome Mr. Pies available, is tied up right now with a new project that you can order now and get just after the first of the year. And that is his Super Station 1. Now, this is being kind of sold or marketed as a PlayStation 1 FPGA clone, but it is a full-blown Mr. device. So in addition to running the PlayStation 1 games, it will run all of the things that Mr. can run as well. And it comes in three colors. I think the transparent blue one is the one that is shipping first. They also have a CD-ROM adapter you can get for a little more money that snaps onto the bottom, and it also has external storage. Of note here, you can also hook this up to analog CRT televisions or, of course, plug it into your HDMI. So they've got a lot of connectivity built into this. Again, full compatibility with the uh, Mr. software. And, of course, it is a Mr. under the hood. So you've got all of those different computers and consoles and arcade games that you can play on this. And I think it looks pretty cool, too. I've got one of these on order, too. So I will uh, review it when it shows up. But this one... Uh, looks cool. I think it's going to be a fun product to play with. And at the moment, if you pre-order it, it will be shipping in the first quarter of 2026, which is just a couple of weeks away. So in conclusion, Analog has some serious headwinds here, especially when you've got this product that just launched. We've got a lot of hype on YouTube, hundreds of thousands of views. Everybody's excited about this thing, but nobody can buy one because they're not in stock and nobody knows when they're going to be in stock again. And what's going to happen next is that there will be a product drop. And just like the Laboo everybody's got to get in and the scalpers will win the day and will continue this cycle. The problem now, though, is that Palmer Lucky is entering into this marketplace without a desire to make a lot of money and a lot of resources and access to the supply chain that Analog does not have. So that's one thing they've got to think about. But also, the Mr. Project has made some substantial gains over the last couple of years, so much so that the Mr. is actually more capable than these analog devices are. You can't pop a cartridge into a Mr., but you can play all the games that you possibly could imagine. You can hook it up to your CRT television, just like you can with the original NT Mini here, and have a great FPGA-based gaming experience. And if you're lucky enough to get one of these Mr. Pies, you're going to spend a lot less money to get a lot more capability. And I think once Taki Udon gets up to production scale on his super station that we talked about earlier, along with the multi-system as well, there's a lot of options out there. And these companies are treating their customers with a little more respect and building up batches and not making this into some big hype machine. So I think Analog's got to make some changes here because their stuff is good. People want to buy them. 
but people also want to feel respected, especially within a community as small and tight as the retro gaming community is. So hopefully they uh, see some changes that they can make soon and make this hardware available again, because it's kind of crazy that I could buy a system eight years ago and have it worth double what I paid for it just because Analog has not taken any new orders for it. I don't know how this benefits them. You would think making products and selling them is a key to a successful business, but maybe this is just really a side hustle for all involved. Who knows, but we'll keep an eye on things. And I've got all of this stuff on order, so we have a lot more FPGA system reviews on the horizon. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.